Kevin Love has been one of the greatest power forwards for over a decade now in the NBA. Uh, thinking back to his Minnesota days, where he averaged 26 points, 13 rebounds per game in the 2013 season. Uh, going up to the Cleveland Cavalier days, where he played with LeBron James and Kyrie Irving and brought them a championship, up until now being the last guy standing in Cleveland. Now, over the course of the past few seasons, injuries have been a big-time issue, and there's a lot of uh, speculation out there that he's not quite motivated to play for the Cavaliers anymore after averaging just 12 points and 7 rebounds per game uh, in only 25 games last NBA season. With that being said, there's been some trade rumors going on, as there always is with Kevin Love, and for today's video, we're going to jump into those and see which teams make the most sense to get K-Love. Yo, what's going on, guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, we are going to be talking about a uh, big time Kevin Love and Colin Sexton trade that's been proposed and overall I thought this would be a pretty solid opportunity to actually talk about some Kevin Love trades because it's just been reported that uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to be trying to get rid of him this NBA offseason so before we get going on today's video if you guys don't mind continuing you know showing that crispy support by leaving a like on this video man 1,000 likes is always the goal and uh, yeah we've been getting like hundreds of new subscribers every single day because awesome people like you are hitting that subscribe button when you guys are new here to the channel channel we're getting so close man to 300,000 I'm gonna be so happy when we get there man because I've been in two I've been like a 200,000 for a very long time now so thank you guys man for that continued support but okay so here was the uh trade I guess rumor or proposal that was put in there uh it's that Colin Sexton and Kevin Love was offered up to the Miami Heat for Tyler Hero Precious Achua God bless uh Andre Iguodala and I guess that was reported by Adam Borai, which I don't have any idea who he is. I think it's a Miami insider, man, because I think you guys can already tell by the initial like proposal of this trade that it's pretty damn one-sided. Um, I guess from the uh, Miami Heat standpoint, like I cannot think of a better trade at the moment, except maybe Tyler Hero for James Harden, but I think that ship has kind of sailed. But yeah, man, uh, by getting Colin Sexton on the Miami Heat, you know, you get that go to bucket getter that uh, doesn't really need to be like, be like he doesn't like have to be like the first option on the team but he can score like a first option if that makes sense like you look at him and you're like okay well Colin Sexton is a value member of this team but I mean like Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo are still like the number two guy or the top two guys right man so you have that going for you but also you get Kevin Love the Miami Heat last season up until getting Dwayne Dedman were uh, very weak on the boards we all know Kevin Love uh, you know loves crashing the boards man you know for uh, lack of a better term right so I mean he can grab some rebounds, stretch the floor. I would be uh, absolutely perfect next to Bam Adebayo, and he gets to be on a contending team. So I think that's definitely a win-win situation as far as Kevin Love and Colin Sexton and the Miami Heat. Now, the losing situation of this that I really don't think makes any sense whatsoever is Tyler Hero and uh, Precious Achua and Iguodala over the Cleveland Cavaliers. So Iguodala, he would get bought out. I think we can all agree on that. He would either, well, get bought out or retire. He might retire, but uh, I think he's got like $15 million, which makes this actually work. Uh, but the thing about Tyler Hero is that, you know, I, I know Tyler Hero can play some point guard, but in my opinion, like, he's more of a two. So, the idea of even trading Colin Sexton away in the first place, I know, is kind of a sore spot for Cleveland Cavalier fans. But also, at the same time, the only reason you trade Colin Sexton away is because you think you are going to be getting Jalen Green in the draft. Jalen Green is a shooting guard. So, what's the point of trading a young shooting guard away for another young shooting guard that should be starting probably or being developed as a starter if you're just going to draft a shooting guard anyway like to me that makes no sense the only way you trade uh, Colin Sexton is if you get you know some sort of like young prospect or draft picks that you can put next to somebody like Jalen Green but this really just makes no sense whatsoever uh and then Precious Achua I know he was kind of you know he we actually had a decent start for the Miami Heat last season but uh ultimately became like just a guy they couldn't really play at the moment uh so him on the Cavs make no sense because they already have Jared Allen, unless Achua is going to be like a backup center, which I guess he probably could be that for his career. So yes, uh, does not make sense for the Cleveland Cavaliers, man. But uh, yeah, that's how a lot of these trades go at times. And sometimes the thing that makes the most sense is from like a financial standpoint, because I was talking to some Cavs fans about this and they were like, well, if they were to do this. I mean, you know, Colin Sexton is going to be a restricted free agent and there's a chance that the team's going to offer him a lot of money that the Cavaliers don't really want to accept. And obviously Kevin Love is still on a very large contract himself. So, I mean, I guess from that standpoint, they're like, yeah, we'll just go with Tyler Hero and maybe we end up getting like Evan Mobley. And then we got, you know, two guys on rookie contracts for a few seasons we free up all that money so i guess from that standpoint it does make sense man but uh you know financially speaking i'm just like 
money's one thing, but also keeping talent on your team is another, right? So, yes. Alrighty, so, um, I guess let's talk about Kevin Love, because I've done videos, you know, previously, not too long ago, about Colin Sexton, guys, check those out, man, on my video playlist. So, let's talk about Kevin Love. Kevin Love is still owed a lot of money. Like, and I, I, I guess I don't really know the circumstance right now with the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm going to guess that Kevin Love is still a pretty solid basketball player. But uh, he might be, like, in the same, like, chat room or something like that as Blake Griffin, where it's just, like, he's just unmotivated with the current small market team that he's with. Um, this previous season, Kevin Love played 25 games. He averaged 12 points, 7 rebounds per game, uh, shot about 37% from three, which is actually, you know, decent numbers. But we all know that there was just times, especially at that circumstance, I think it was Colin Sexton or whatever against the Toronto Raptors, where um, he just was like, hey, like, screw this. And he got he threw, like, a temper tantrum almost and was just, like, really pissy for kind of like no reason whatsoever right man but uh you know you look at his stats you're like okay those are decent stats they don't really equate to 30 million dollars a season but at the same time too um you know if you look at his per 36 which is not like the greatest indicator for productivity and stuff um his per 36 were still like 18 points 10 rebounds per game so i mean you know that and that's pretty much what he averaged the season before when he wasn't injured and was actually like trying and stuff like that so i still think that kevin love is still there I just think it has to be the perfect circumstance where he can actually like live up to that and wants to be on a team that is contending, right, man? So, uh, yeah, when he initially got that contract, I think the idea was that, you know, like LeBron's going to the Lakers, Kyrie Irving's on the Celtics now. We're going to offer this money up to Kevin Love because hopefully maybe he can become the type of player that he was on Minnesota. And that just really never happened, right, man? He had too many injuries and just wasn't really that type of guy anymore. Didn't even have, like, the body. If you guys look at Minnesota Kevin Love, he was a very big boy. So, uh, yeah, definitely got more into health and stuff like that. And uh, while that's good for his game in one aspect, you know, as far as, like, banging down low, it can kind of hurt him right there, right, man? So, yes, um, I guess what are my expectations for Kevin Love next NBA season? Uh, I do think that his minutes are going to start going down. I don't even know if he's like a starter anymore, man. Like there is circumstances where he could be a starter, but I would say he might go like that Derrick Rose type of route where he is injury prone, could be a starter, but if you start him, you risk, you know, him getting injured again and stuff like that, man, but can come off the bench as a six man, can play the closing, you know, fourth quarter minutes and stuff like that. But uh, I would say if Kevin Love can return and be like a 15.8 rebound type of guy, that's going to be a huge asset for a team. Um, but when it comes down to trades, once again, like the difficult part is going to be matching contracts, which, you know, that's, that, that, that is the part of the Miami Heat trade that I did like, where it's like, okay, you're willing to take on Kevin Love. Well, okay, well here you can also have Colin Sexton, right, man, who's on his rookie deal still only for a little while, but I think he's got one more season on that. So yeah, we're going to talk about a few trades, um, or I guess teams that I think Kevin Love could go to this NBA offseason if they find a trade partner and stuff like that. You guys let me know in the comment section below. Give me the perfect Kevin Love trade, or do you think he gets bought out? I mean, that's, you know, the buyout market has definitely been like a hot topic in the NBA. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but, you know, Andre, or not, well, you know, I guess Drummond didn't get bought out by the Pistons. He got bought out by the Cavaliers. So uh, we bought out Blake Griffin and Reggie Jackson, who were both like, decent on well Reggie Jackson played freaking amazing on the Clippers man like we could have got something bag for the man but it's all good we got the first pick so whew, karma points right man Alrighty, so these are the teams that I think that Kevin Love could go to this NBA offseason. Uh, number one, assuming that Damian Lillard is not traded. I mean, you know, we've been saying Portland Trailblazers, it seems like, for like three or four years now, and it just never happens. It's like, oh yeah, like Kevin Love would be perfect with Damian Lillard. And he really would. Like a lineup of um Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. You know, Rocco or Kamala Anthony, Kevin Love, and Nurkic, like, that's a pretty damn solid team, right? And it just, like, gives, like, them another solid, like, wing type of player and stuff like that. Can play in the post a little bit in Kevin Love. Um, I just think it's a good fit, man. Now, it was a better fit, like, two or three seasons ago. Now, it's not as good a fit because he is older and stuff. But uh, overall, still not bad. Uh, another team I have is kind of a sleeper team. And I think the Utah Jazz would be a great fit. Uh, the, the Jazz, they are definitely, like, a mix of, like, youthful players. But also, they got some kind of older veterans out there. We're getting a guy like Kevin Love to kind of like stagnate mints with some of the older vets, um, I think would kind of work out pretty nicely. Plus, we don't really know what's going to happen with Mike Conley, what type of money he's going to get on the free agent market, you know, making the All-Star game last season and stuff like that. He might get a solid contract elsewhere that they might not want to pay him, so they might actually have the ability to take on a guy like Kevin Love from a salary cap standpoint. Um, 
but I do think that once again, Kevin Love with the fourth spot next to Rudy Gobert, that just kind of works. Uh, you can have uh, Bojan Bogdanovic either star the three spot, or once again, man, he's getting a little bit older, so come off the bench as a six man. You got Joe Ingles, Royce O'Neal, so you have a lot of flexibility there as far as wing players and guys in the front court. So uh, yeah, his rebounding and three point shot will work nicely next to Rudy Gobert in the first place. And uh, the Utah Jazz, number one seed, so I mean, they're a contending team. So Kevin Love might be the guy that can help get them over the edge. Uh, another team that uh, is not really a contender, but would be just kind of more like, man, this would be fun to watch, would be the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, that's where everything started. That's where Kevin Love had his greatest, like, stat nominant type of years. And uh, the Timberwolves, they need a power forward. So it might be a good case where he can team up with D'Angelo, Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, uh, Anthony Edwards, and you ask me like Kevin Love's motivated with that squad not a bad looking team and then uh two other teams where I'm just kind of like okay I could kind of see it but if it doesn't happen not that big a deal either uh the LA Clippers you know they ran a lot of like uh Marcus Morris and Nicholas Batum at the power forward spot this previous season uh Batum actually was pretty solid but what makes Batum special is that his contract like he was on like a bought out type of contract right so um yeah from a value standpoint I mean you are still taking on Kevin Love's 30 million dollar deal but to do that, they would probably have to, like, trade away Luke Kennard or Marcus Morris, which, you know, for the Cavaliers, I mean, get Luke Kennard now, you know, man, get some more PT out there, right? Uh, then another team, Dallas Mavericks, uh, they're looking to improve, get some more talent on the team next to Luka and Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, they do have Maxi Kleber, who I think is a bit better right now than Kevin Love, if I'm being 100% honest, or at least a better fit, maybe I should say. Um, then again, that could be a bad take, you know, if Kevin Love bounces back and can be like an 18 and 10 guy again. But right now, I'm just saying, man, like Maxi Kleber is actually a pretty underrated player in the NBA. So those are the teams that I think Kevin Love should go to. You guys let me know in the comment section below what you think about this. The TLDR on this, man, if you skip to the end, uh, great trade for the Miami Heat. Financially makes sense for the Cavaliers, but from a talent standpoint, especially, you know, not to roast Cleveland, but I know you guys are kind of like in the same realm as Detroit where it's like you know free agents and exactly like lining up at the door to come there right man so uh sometimes you want to keep your talent around you know the best of your ability right man so that's all we got for this video be sure to drop that like subscribe if you're new to the channel and peace out my friends